So my husband and I just went on a 20 day vacation to the East Coast and tallying up the numbers of what we spent, oh, we spent a lot. I did not realize that we spent that much. But I was working while I was on vacation as well. And as a freelance writer, I have the flexibility to build a schedule that works for me. So the question was, as we went through our trip, did I make enough money to actually pay for the trip while I was on vacation? It's gonna be a close one. Hey, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel or welcome for the very first time. All around, welcome. I'm Carrie Blogger, a career freelancer on Fiverr.com where I've been selling as a Fiverr Pro Verified Copywriter for about the past eight and a half years now. <laughs> and in today's Freelance Friday video, like I said, I am comparing the numbers between our spending and my earning on our 20 day trip all across major cities on the East Coast. During this video, I'll be giving kind of like trip highlights, relive the glory with me, showing a graph of everything that we spent and then talking through strategies of how I super realistically, super comfortably enjoyed working while I was on vacation. It's definitely a strategy that I have honed over the years and I've pretty much perfected. But before we can get into that, we have to announce this week's blogger of the week. If you would like to be the blogger of the week, just like Adit Agarwal, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you might get picked. Let's get into it. It has been so long since I filmed a video because obviously I was gone, busy. <laughs> I missed you guys. All right, so our graph is starting off with a big discrepancy. The line on the top, the darker line is what we spent and the bottom kind of teal colored line is what I've earned. So I was giving myself a little bit of a head start to keep up with the head start I had in spending because before we even left, obviously I had paid for a lot of stuff. I had, right, I had reserved all of our hotels and, and booked those. I had paid for our flights, I had paid for the majority of our museum entrances because during COVID times I needed to book in advance for those um, timed entrances. Starting off, we were at $4,600 before we ever got on a plane. Yikes. <laughs> for my earnings, started by considering the orders that would have been due when I was on vacation. And one of my first things I'm gonna suggest is that you pre-work, clear your schedule before you go on the vacation so that you start with a good block of time that gives you a lot of flexibility. So before we left, I did a lot of work. So counting all that work that would have been due on vacation that I technically did at home before we left, I know, I started off with $2,900. I should also mention that this earnings that I'm tracking is after Fiverr's commission. I never look at the total amount. I always look at what I take home, but it is pre-tax. I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna get taxed on all this. Um, I'm also not including my husband's salary in this, so we're just gonna say it just even the playing field. Our trip started off strong in Chicago. First thing, we hit up the Millennium Cloud Park, Cl Cloud Gate in Millennium Park, also known as the Bean. It was super pretty. Then we did a riverboat cruise through Chicago. If you're in Chicago, definitely check out a river cruise for the architecture. It is gorgeous. And then we walked along a, a long, long walk. We did so much walking along the lake, Lake Michigan, unless I'm sounding like an idiot. I'm not used to seeing lakes with beaches. It was very cool. They have a gorgeous little boardwalk. And then we just did a ton of walking. Next day, no work on the docket for me. Uh, we had a lot to do again. And because I had pre-worked, I had some flexibility. So we visited the Art Institute of Chicago. I love art museums as well. It was a really good collection. And we visited the Willis Tower, also known as the Sears Tower. They have this super trendy skybox, which is just glass overlooking the edge of the skyscraper. I'm not afraid of heights at all. My husband does not like heights at all. <laughs> I drag him to all this stuff. And so he very sweetly just took pictures of me in the box and he didn't bother to step out over the edge because he couldn't handle it. And you can see this incredible view. You only get a minute in the little box area, but it was genuinely a really cool experience. And then for our last day in Chicago, we visited a botanical conservatory. I love plants. I will always go looking for gorgeous, pretty plants and it was really, really stunning. And so if you're in the Chicago area, go check out Garfield Conservatory. It was so beautiful. And uh, we visited Fulton Market District, part of town, really cool vibe. We loved exploring through that area. Just climbing on the spending, the chart's looking a little scary right now. But I knew that I was going to have 
transition days when we were going to fly to New York. So that was when I got some more work done. I really, tip number two, enjoy working while I'm in transit days. So I usually prep all my documents ahead of time. That way I can just get on the train or the bus or the plane and just open my laptop and just start writing because I literally can't get up, I can't go anywhere, it's the perfect time to work. When we landed in New York City, we were staying in Manhattan. We started off by visiting the Natural History Museum, which honestly was a big dud. I'm not saying don't visit it, but there were so many people, a little overwhelming in the pandemic mindset. So we saw some giant, really cool skeletons, but it wasn't that, it wasn't a highlight of the trip for sure. And we visited the Empire State Building, gorgeous, gorgeous views. Honestly, the Empire State Building was one of my top moments throughout the whole trip and I loved it. And then we did just a lot of walking around. That's basically what this whole trip was, was just a lot of walking. We visited Radio City Music Hall on our way back. And I got this really cool picture with no crowds. Times Square is lame. So, I mean, go see it, but it's not that cool. Then I wrote a little bit more and we got started right away in Central Park. Food above all is like top of our list when we travel. I'm a foodie, I guess you'd say. And I am, spoiler, pregnant. While I've been pregnant, pickles have been top of my list. All of the food scene that we ate was just phenomenal. And we capped off the night with a game at Yankee Stadium, which honestly was super boring. We left after like the third quarter. I don't know what the baseball terminology is, but we did see a home run. So we were like, that's probably the most exciting thing we're gonna see today. All right, let's go home. Looking at the spending graph, you can see that <laughs> we're pretty much spending like 150 to $250 a day. And so it's a pretty steady climb. And at this point, I am not even remotely close to keeping up with the earnings pace. Scary. The next day we visited the Museum of Modern Art. Like I said, I love art museums. We hit up so many of them and I especially love contemporary and modern art, something's just really striking and makes like an impact on you. Case in point, these gorgeous giant cement blocks. I mean, you might look at this and think like, how is that art? To me, this is just like, I love it. And we also visited the Harry Potter store, which is silly. I got a cup of butter beer, which is really good. And they had just had lots of like activities and stuff, which is what I want in like a store experience. So this right here is our last day in Manhattan, central Manhattan. And we started off by visiting the High Line. It's gorgeous. It's so pretty. It's a retrofitted um, elevated train track that they've turned into a city park. So pretty. And we also visited the Vessel, which is an art installation or architecture. I'm not sure what to call it, but it was really pretty. It is an giant like honeycomb shaped hive with all these interlocking stairs. You get cool views. Just going up the stairs is really pretty. It looks very different from the bottom, the top, inside, outside. Definitely a cool experience. But I did <laughs> read that a couple days after we visited, um, they had yet another on the uh, vessel and so it's actually closed now and they don't even know if it's going to reopen. So we might've been one of the last ones to get in and see it. Another highlight of our trip is jazz. My husband is a jazz drummer and I as another musician, although not in the jazz space, uh, have a deep appreciation for that. So we visited a jazz club in Chicago, Birdland and the Blue Note. Live music is so exciting. It's such a special experience. All right, another train day. Honestly, I'm a little lost in my graph. This is not an exact science, but I was trying to be very diligent throughout the trip of marking exactly what we spent and exactly what I earned. We visited Washington DC and just did a quick overnight trip. Honestly, it was a big bummer. We did not enjoy Washington DC very much. It didn't click with us, I don't know. I've heard good things about DC. I mean, obviously it's a lot of history there, but not a thing. We did visit the Abraham Lincoln Memorial, which was very cool. I did honestly expect it to be bigger. I don't know why the way that it's usually framed in pictures looks like this monumental giant statue. And it was very cool, but it was not like life-changing. The Washington Memorial and Reflecting Ponds though was very, very cool, very pretty. We enjoyed that. You can see a lot of the smoky haze that was blowing over from West Coast wildfires, which is crazy. And the Smithsonian's, which like I have said, I love art museums. I just love museums in general. Smithsonian's were a huge bust because of COVID closures, because they changed the timed entry thing that I had planned on us doing. And they were just a giant, giant line for the very, very few museums that were open. So. Instead, we went to the Women in the Arts Museum, which was lovely and beautiful in theory, but incredibly small. And then the next day we took the train back. So now we're staying in Soho. We were in like um, Chinatown, Little Italy, Nolita-ish 
part of Soho. Really fantastic part of town. That was, I think, our favorite place to stay. We went to a play. It was in this tiny little black box theater in the middle of nowhere, up three flights of stairs. And it wasn't what I was expecting, but it was something. And since Broadway's still closed, we had to do some kind of theater while we're in New York. And we did visit our hotel's rooftop bar before turning in for the night. We turned around quick and took another Amtrak to Philadelphia this time. This was a true day trip, just straight in, straight out. We walked around a lot. We ate some food. We did visit this little kind of artsy museum called the Philadelphia Magic Gardens, which was a little disappointing, but had some really cool and interesting stained glass and found art kind of pieces. Back to Nolita we go, again, working on train days, working in early mornings, working in a late afternoon, because we're usually walking around so much and doing so much stuff. I really pack in a lot into our days that we often come back and take like a little nap at three or four, or we would just entirely come back early for the night at around seven. And so it's not hard for me to squeeze in, you know, 45 minutes, hour and a half of work in the day to drill out some orders and get my scale a little bit closer. Like I mentioned, we're staying in Little Italy and we absolutely loved walking through those cultural centers. It was fantastic. I don't have a picture, but we also did the Tenement Museum, which I highly recommend, cannot recommend that enough. I think it's so fascinating to go through a refurbished real tenement building and apartment building um, where an immigrant family lived that told their story, their experiences right where they lived it. We also found the best pizza I have literally ever eaten in my life. It is called Nolita Pizza. Oh my God, so good. And then I just wanted to show a gorgeous picture of our hotel. All right, our spending is still climbing and I'm not keeping up. I honestly did not realize that we were spending this much money. <laughs> we uh, like to eat, like I said, and everything is just like way more expensive on the East Coast. If it was gonna be a $7 breakfast sandwich, like an artisan breakfast sandwich in Portland, uh, all of a sudden it's like $20 in New York plus tax. We don't have any sales tax in Oregon, and that was a little bit of an adjustment to get used to paying that much. Yikes. We went down to like, the southern tip of Manhattan, Wall Street, Charging Bull, the World Trade Center, and Twin Towers Memorial. Then we got on a boat and did the little tour to get to Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Ellis Island was a high point because they have a really interesting museum there that we enjoyed walking through. Not too shabby for our last day in Soho. Like I said, Soho was just, it has such a vibe to it. It has such like a cultural community. It's way more like lived in. Everything was spilling onto the streets because they had outdoor seating and closed streets and pedestrian friendly zones during COVID and everything we loved. The next day we had yet another train trip because we wanted to go visit Boston. That's another overnighter just like DC. Cause honestly, if we're gonna fly, all the way over there. I wanna see a ton of stuff. I wanna stay for a while. I wanna really like get into the area because flying is really expensive and not good for the environment. <laughs> and so I wanted to make the most of it. I downloaded a self-guided tour for the Boston Freedom Trail. So we did the majority of that tidbits of history, um, which I don't remember because I forgot everything, but it was really interesting while we were there. And just seeing the harbor area was very, very pretty. Oh my God! And here, you guys, this was out of nowhere. I crossed the line. I did not expect <laughs> at all, at all, <laughs> even while I was tallying this stuff, to cross over and earn more, at least, you know, in part, in part, than I was spending. Because, oh my God, we were spending so much money. And I did it. I crossed over my line. There's hope. But we have to see if I uh, keep it rolling because now it's close. Now it's a close game. We stayed in Brooklyn for the last chunk of our trip. Another highlight of our trip is just so simple and it's something that is like intrinsic to the city itself and it's not a tourist trap in my opinion. The Brooklyn Bridge was phenomenal. We loved walking over it and it was just a lovely, lovely way to cap off our evening and get to see a different view of the city that is so, so special. So the next day I didn't work because I uh, knew that I was having a travel day coming up, which means that our lines are intersecting. That's not good. We visited a German style beer garden in Williamsburg that was genuinely pretty cool. Got to spend some time walking along the water. They're working on a waterfront path. that was really nice over there. And we rode city bikes just to get around and see a little more of the city. So this was kind of Winding our trip down, we had done so much stuff. We had experienced so many things and it was nice to just kind of 
relax into the city a little bit. In another life, I would be a travel planner. I love planning trips. We visited the Greenwood Cemetery, which was entirely my idea. Eric was literally like, you take us to the most boring, <laughs> weird places, but it's so pretty, it's so special. It was this massive cemetery that is so beautifully tended. Walking through Prospect Park was also of gem. We love city parks that are well-maintained and well-used by the community with lots of things to do. Got city bikes again, rode around, walked around, got some paddle boat time. It was amazing. And to cap off the night, we visited the Brooklyn Museum. So we saw the cause showcase. Eric got some shirts from there. He's a big fan. Our last full day in Brooklyn, you guys, we've made it to the end of this trip. Do you even remember what the heck we did in Chicago? We visited Smorgasburg in Williamsburg, and that is a food cart, food pod festival thing. Incredible. We literally just ate rounds and rounds of food until we couldn't eat anymore. So good. And then we took the train down to Coney Island, which was a unique experience. We didn't ride any rides because I'm pregnant. We didn't go in the water because I didn't bring swimming suits. Oregon coast is not swimmable. That's not a culture that I grew up with on the coast. I did not think I was gonna do it. I swear to you, literally until I was tallying these up, I was so convinced I was not close. I was prepared to give myself handicap after handicap. I was gonna take off my husband's alcoholic drinks cause I'm not drinking those expensive cocktails. He bought some shoes and clothes and stuff. I've splurged on some $380 perfume that I really, really wanted. I was gonna take that off and, and pretend that that's not part of traveling. I was gonna cut the trip in half and say, okay, at least I could pay for my half of the trip. So honestly, it is like, so rewarding and reassuring and exciting to look at this and say, damn, I did it. That's absolutely crazy. All right, and then the last thing, uh, obviously you've seen the bar graph. You've seen that I did it. I did it. But I was curious too of what the breakdown was of how we spent all of that, all of that money and how I earned enough to over shoot my goal. So for spending, food, our hotel, and transit were the main big components. And then the earning breakdown for how I worked with my clients, you can see that website copywriting was the biggest chunk. That's because I had two $2,000 orders. Email campaigns are also really popular right now for whatever reason, everything kind of ebbs and flows. I really enjoy writing those. I did some descriptions of products that people are selling online for e-commerce, a couple blogs, which I think we're all with an electric bike company in the UK. He's a repeat client, really fun to work with. I enjoy working with him a lot. Tips, we got some tips. The tips were nice. And then the little orange section is passive income. It's not much, but I'm including things like my Fiverr Learn course, which you can find the link to in the description down below. Fiverr affiliates gave me <laughs> a couple pennies. Uh, Amazon affiliates gave me some pennies. I sold one Teespring shirt and then YouTube AdSense. Another little tip that you'll hear from me about how to make it work on vacation so that you are doing the right amount of work, but you're not ruining the vacation. Obviously I had the time of my life. I loved our trip. How did I do that? Instead of turning myself completely out of office and making no money, which obviously would have been a terrible idea for myself, I just turned off two gigs that I didn't want to do on vacation, that I was least interested in, that would pull down the amount of traffic a little bit, pull down the popularity a little bit, just creep it a little bit more under wraps. You can just pause those gigs when you don't want to do them. So just little changes like that is all I had to do to keep it manageable, to make sure that I still had interest, but I wasn't going to overload myself. I don't know if you're still watching. I never know if you're still watching, um, but you know that if you are, you're my actual hero. Thank you. Hopefully you found this mildly interesting. Lots of chatting. We'll see how much I can trim this down, but this is fun. This is fun and I missed you guys and I'm just glad I can share this very, very, very transparent view of the reality of my situation here. Um, yeah, all right, you are worth so much more than your workload. You know it, now let's get back to work. Mm -hmm.